Hi guys, Miss Alvarez again. Now, we're going to talk today about the Earth and its movement. We know that Earth rotates and it revolves. So, it rotates on its axis and revolves in its orbit around the Sun. Now, we've already read our book, so let's get started on some models. Alright guys, so this is a globe of our planet. We know that in itself it is a model. I've modified it a little bit to show you a few things that I want to point out to you. This, of course, is the North Pole. As we go through our demonstration, I want you to notice what happens as far as the shading goes at the North Pole. You're going to notice that it doesn't always receive as much sunlight as the rest of the planet. The South Pole is going to be the same way because of the tilt of the Earth, which is about 23 degrees. 22 to 24, it changes during the year, guys. Because of its tilt, we're going to see some differences in the North and the South Pole. Now, we also need to know that our Earth rotates on this axis that runs through the middle of the planet from North to South Pole. And it rotates from West to East. So if I've got a globe and I've got North pointing up, then that means I'm going to push my globe into the right direction. Not left, right. So we rotate towards the right, looking at my globe here. We also orbit around the sun in the same direction. So as I'm rotating like this, I'm also moving to the right around the sun, which would be in that direction. So I'm going around the sun and rotating at the same time. All right, guys. Now, we also need to know a little bit about how we split our planet. We have a couple of things you need to know about. Our equator, of course, and you guys have learned that since about second grade, talking about the belt around our planet, and it does go right through the center here. It separates our planet into north and south. So when we split north and south, we split it at the equator. Everything towards the North Pole is the Northern Hemisphere. So split it here, and that beautiful view is our Northern Hemisphere. Now, if we go in the opposite direction, south, everything south of that, and you can't see it because of this little thing here, but everything south of that, including most of South America, Australia, some of Asia, the bottom part of Africa, all of that, and Antarctica are all in the southern hemisphere. Now, I also have an east and a west separation, and that happens in two different parts. One is the, oh, let me find it, the prime meridian. Now, the prime meridian goes through Greenwich, England, and it goes from the North Pole to the South Pole, all the way down that zero degree line. Everything in this direction or to the right of that, looking at my globe, is the eastern hemisphere. To the left of that is the western hemisphere. But we know if we just kept going, we would go all the way back around. So there has to be a stopping point in our east and our west, and there is. If we move over here, the 180 degrees is on the international date line. And you can see that the international date line here kind of skews a little bit. It's about where we're going to split that. So everything to the left of that is the eastern hemisphere, and everything to the west of that is the western hemisphere. So when I look at what's between these two lines, that one and that one, this, and that does include China, and that includes most of Africa, Russia, Australia, all of that is in the eastern hemisphere of our planet. Now when I go to the opposite side of the earth, there's that line I'm crossing. I'm moving into the west, and when I hit that prime meridian again, I come back. All of this is our western hemisphere. So yes, boys and girls, you live in the western hemisphere of our planet, as does South America, Central America, North America. So you can see this section of our planet is the west. When we say that the planet rotates from west to east, it starts from the west and moves to the east. So in just a minute, I'm going to show you how that translates into how our days and our nights are 
are set up. All right, so we're about to do our demonstration, and I have to have the lights off for this because in space, our light doesn't come from a light bulb. It comes from the sun, our source of energy for our entire planet and solar system. So we've got to turn this off and turn the sun on. Lexus? see here guys that I've got 227 p.m. Wednesday here in Corinth Mississippi but in Wuhan China it is 327 a.m. Thursday March 26th so they're about 13 hours ahead of us in time because their day begins before ours does okay our Sun has not moved it's in the same position I have moved the camera so that you can see a distinct line from the north to the south of our planet whenever it's in the sunlight. Now I can see that the back of the planet is now at nighttime and that line is showing me day and night. Now as it's turning you can see these different countries going into the dark. Okay. So these countries now have no sunlight showing on them, but the other side does. Now at the very back of it, it's all dark because none of the sun is shining back here. If I move to the other side, I can see the other side of the earth has the same issue. We've got light showing dark but in this direction I've got the light coming up out of the dark so this is where we say the Sun rises in the east and sets in the west so students I hope you've enjoyed this segment and I hope some of you noticed that Whenever we were looking at the sun, it was constantly tilted this way towards the light. And because of that, we see that the southern hemisphere was pointed more directly in the sunlight because of that tilt. And that is when the southern hemisphere has summer. Whenever the earth revolves around the sun, though, it will change position so that the northern hemisphere 
at some point will then be in direct sunlight and the southern hemisphere would not and therefore the northern hemisphere would be having sunlight and summer. The North Pole... <laughs>